Welcome to 22 in 22. Today's topic is testicles. So let's get this ball rolling. Testicles, what are they? So the main function of testicles is to create and store sperm. Why are testicles outside of the body? Because our body temperatures are just a little too warm to make sure that sperm stays nice and healthy. So it's a little too warm. So they need to be outside of the body, which is why testicles are outside of the body. So those individuals with male anatomy are generally born with two testicles. So testicles actually start in the back and travel while the fetus is developing into the scrotum. So they travel from the back to the front. Now that's important, I'll tell you that why later. But when a baby is born with male anatomy, they should have two testicles in the scrotal sac and that sits behind the penis. So the testicles are connected to the body via a few tubes. So each testicle, on the back of each testicle, there is a structure called the epididymis, and that's kind of a spongy, squishy collection of tubules where sperm is created and then lit, uh, hangs out for a while. Um, but this epididymis is on the back and then wraps up um, into the vas deferens, which is a tube then that connects the testicle to the rest of the reproductive system. Now with ejaculation, the sperm within the testicle epididymis travels through that vas deferens, collects some other seminal fluids, and comes out in the form of ejaculate. It's estimated that with each ejaculation, there are anywhere from tens to hundreds of millions of sperm released. So that's a lot of work. All right, now on to a couple of important points about the testicles. So because they hang outside the body, they are more susceptible to trauma or other forces. So you hopefully have not experienced this if you have male genitalia, but a blow to the testicles can be incredibly painful. And that's mainly because this is a highly innervated part of the body and there aren't any bones or big muscles protecting your testicles. They're basically exposed. And so it's really important if you play like a contact sport or anything where balls are flying at you to wear a protective cup. But if you are ever hit in the testicles and there is severe pain that lasts longer than like 15 to 20 minutes or so, or if you ever notice significant swelling or bleeding into the scrotum, or if there's ever blood in your pee, those are emergencies and you should go get seen by a doctor. Um, but generally speaking, when someone is hit in the testicles, even if it's, if it's kind of hard, um, usually you'll be just fine. But there are some cases where there's really intense or severe trauma and that needs to be seen right away. The other thing that is important to know is that sometimes there's something called testicular torsion. And that is when the testicles, so as we talked about a minute ago, the tubes that come out of the testicles and the blood vessels and everything that feed the testicles can get twisted. So if you ever have severe pain out of nowhere in the testicle, it could be that your testicle has twisted on itself. That is an emergency and you need to go to the doctor or hospital right away. There are a couple other things that it could be, so don't panic. Um, that testicle twisting on itself is an emergency, um, needs to be twisted back right away by a professional. Um, again, could be a couple other things like a testicular appendix um, that you should talk to a doctor about just to make sure that it's not actual testicle tw twisting on itself, but um, there are some things that could be that aren't as scary. So don't panic, but go see a doctor. All right. The last thing I want to talk about are testicular exams. So there are three kind of exams that I want to talk about. The first two are exams that doctors do, and the last one is one that you can do on your own. So first exam, the puberty exam. A lot of doctors, especially pediatricians like myself or family medicine doctors, will want to look at testicles as someone is growing. We want to make sure that there are two testicles, and we want to make sure that puberty is going as expected. The testicles are actually the first 
thing to change during puberty. So they get larger. They go from about the size of a grape, a large green grape, to about the size of a small egg. Um, so doctors really do want to take a look and make sure both testicles are there. I know it's super embarrassing and you can probably talk to your doctor about if it if it's a no-go for you that day, it's usually okay, but we just want to make sure that things are growing as they should. Um, then the other thing that doctors do is the hernia check or the turn your head and cough exam. And this comes back to where testicles start. When you are developing, the testicles start in the back of the abdomen and travel forward, but they're still connected to the body through a tunnel, essentially. All the vas deferens and the blood vessels and the nerves, all of them travel through that tunnel. And sometimes our abdominal contents, I know it sounds weird, but can actually protrude into that tunnel. And that is a hernia. So the turn your head and cough exam is when a doctor takes their finger and they try to track up the vas deferens and the blood vessels and check and see if they can feel if there are any abdominal contents coming into your scrotum. So that is, again, they'll, they'll touch your testicles and feel up along the vas deferens, feel to your body, and then see if they feel any extra abdomen coming through. Um, it, generally, we don't do this until you're quite a bit older, um, but some doctors start doing it earlier, and that would be, again, that turn your head and cough exam. And the reason we, that we say cough is because that puts extra pressure in your abdomen, and <clears throat> you might have abdominal contents a little bit more palpable. Um, we can feel them a little bit easier when you cough. That's why. All right. Now, the last exam I want to talk about is the testicular self-exam. And this is one that's important to do if you have testicles because, tes because of testicular cancer. So I put my egg in this sock, okay? So pretend the sock is the scrotum and then the egg is your testicle. Now, testicles themselves should feel nice and smooth with the exception of along the back inner side. So where the testicles sort of turn toward the penis, you will probably, if you feel now or later, um, you can feel some of that epididymis. So a little bit of the squishy stuff on the back side of the testicles. And then those that vas deferens that sort of connects up the, the tubes that connect to the rest of the, the reproductive system or to the penis. And so um, the testicles themselves should feel nice and smooth. They should feel about the same size. Um, one is sometimes a little bit larger than the other one. If you notice a huge size difference, then you should talk to your doctor. Um, and if you ever notice any lumps or bumps, you should talk to your doctor. Um, but the other thing is that, again, that squishy part on the back, that epididymis, totally normal. So if you have any questions, you can chat with your doc, but it's recommended that you feel your testicles about every month or so just to make sure you don't feel any lumps or bumps. Um, and that is the third exam. All right, now, on to your questions. Question number one. Hey, I'm 12, and my testicles are very small, about the size of a grape, and are mushy feeling. Are they normally like that? <laughs> so, yes, the testicles, especially before they really start making sperm or, you know, pumping out testosterone, they can be smaller and squishier, but as they grow, so again, starting out the size of a grape, you may have inspired my previous comparison, starting out about the size of a grape and enlarging to about the size of a small egg, um, you're probably still at the beginning, if not, not yet started, in puberty. Give it time and eventually the testicles will enlarge to the egg size and that'll be toward the end of puberty and then adulthood. Um, you're still right on track. Uh, puberty can start anywhere in the next year or two for you. Totally fine and normal. All right, question number two. Are the testicles more sensitive than the penis? So it depends why you are asking. If you're talking about sort of sexual sensitivity, um, both can provide pleasure. So both penis and testicles can provide pleasure for an individual. Um, the penis is generally the source of orgasm or that sensation that causes orgasm. Um, but testi testicles again can, um, or the scrotum can provide some pleasure. Um, if you're talking about like sensitivity with 
like the blow to the testicles, like if you're kicked or punched, then um, yes, the testicles are very sensitive. It doesn't mean that the penis isn't as important. It certainly is, but the testicles really um, bear the brunt of a lot of blows to the private area. So um, that's kind of my answer to your question. I hope I answered it. <laughs> um, question number three. I don't know if this is a joke, but I think you submitted it a couple times, so I'm going to answer it anyway. Um, why do my penis and testicles get stuck to my legs, and how do I prevent this from happening? So this is a very moist area of the body between the legs. Um, both female and male genitalia, it's always, it's moist down there. And so things that you can do to help prevent sticking. Um, first of all, make sure when you get out of the shower or bath, you dry off everything very well. Um, a lot of hair, if you have a lot of hair down there, you could trim that um, because that can contribute to the moisture. Um, and then um, it's possible you could use an antiperspirant down there. So like a um, deodorant and antiperspirant, the antiperspirant will help prevent sweating. Um, or you could wear boxer briefs or briefs. And that will keep things closer to your body and prevent them from rubbing um, up against your legs. So you probably wear boxers and you could just switch to something a little bit snugger. All right, question number four. Why do I produce a lot of sperm and why does it come out so aggressively? Okay, so first of all, your terminology. Um, you can't actually see sperm, so you're probably meaning why do you produce so much semen? Um, again, each ejaculate is going to have tens to hundreds of millions of sperm in it. And the semen uh, is the fluid that picks up that sperm and the, the rest of the fluid. Um, all of that combined is semen. And that's probably what you're talking about is a lot. The average ejaculate is going to be about a teaspoon, but it can be a little bit more or less. And that is totally normal. It also depends on how often you are ejaculating. So um, if you ejaculate a few times in a short amount of time, the amount might be a little bit less. Um, as far as coming out aggressively, so that is kind of the way that your body is meant to be. Um, there are some muscles in your, your testicles that cause them to not shrink up, but to bunch up when you ejaculate. So it helps sort of forcefully shoot the semen out. Um, this is from a reproductive standpoint, potentially beneficial. Um, again, the idea being that the sperm will eventually reach an egg and make a baby, blah, blah, blah. Sound effects. It's okay. It's supposed to come out aggressively. If it doesn't, that's okay too. Um, but, but it's not a problem if it comes out very forcefully. All right. Question number five. So this is the first part of a two-part question. So question five, for the testicles video, why does it hurt boys so much when you hit them in the balls? Again, they're not protected. They're not protected by bones or thick muscles or anything, but they are very innervated. They're very important, so they have a lot of blood and nerves that go to them, but they're not protected, and so that's why. Um, if you think about other parts of your body, you have bones and muscle um, that protect things, but the testicles themselves, lots of nerves there, not protected, so that's why it hurts so much. Um, and the second part is, what does turn your head and cough mean? Alright, so like I discussed earlier, that's the hernia check. So when the doctor uses their finger to try to feel if you have a hernia, and then they say turn your head and cough. The reason that we say cough is to, again, put more pressure on your abdomen and see if we can feel anything protruding into that, uh, into your scrotum, into that hernia. The reason we say turn your head is so you don't cough on us. And that's it. Question number seven. I sometimes get a sharp pain below the ball sack when I pee or come. Is that normal? So like on the bottom side of the testicles or scrotum, I am not entirely sure what that might mean. Um, with peeing, peeing doesn't really have anything to do with the testicles. Ejaculation does. And so 
it's possible that you have a little bit of sort of um, like a there's again this little part of the testicle it's the testicular appendix that sometimes can twist on itself and cause a little um, pain I'm not sure though what that would be so I would say if it continues or if it gets worse it might be worth talking to your doctor the one thing that it that you want to make sure it's not is a sexually transmitted infection so if you are sexually active um, it would be important to have your pee checked to see if there are any infections in there um, but that would be my one thought, is it may be a sexually transmitted infection, um, but not 100%. So, um, might be worth talking to your doctor. Question number eight. Again, another two-parter. Um, first, is it a problem if I get blue balls often? No. So blue balls, the medical terminology is epididymal hypertension. And basically what that means is when you're aroused, there's a lot of blood flow that goes to the private area, so to the testicles and to the penis. And blue balls occurs when um, that blood just sits there. So normally with orgasm and ejaculation, the blood that has flowed to the penis and testicles then goes away. But when you don't achieve orgasm, and ejaculate that blood kind of sits there for a while it'll eventually drain but it sits there for a while and puts a lot of pressure on the nerves and things like that causes um, some pain or discomfort and so to answer your question um, it's not pleasant to get blue balls all the time I'm not aware of any long-term complications of it of someone getting blue balls all the time um, but it just probably wouldn't be super pleasant for you um, but that's it. And then your second part, why does one of my testicles lie horizontally? That I would talk to your doctor about. So when a testicle is a little bit looser in the sac, uh, in the scrotum, that makes it easier to twist on itself and cause testicular torsion. And so it's not necessarily a big problem, um, and it may not be anything at all, but um, I would talk to your doctor about that because we want to make sure that you aren't susceptible to that ball twisting and or that testicle twisting and causing an emergency. So I would get it checked out by a doctor um, and might not might not be anything or they might recommend a simple procedure that pins your testicle to your scrotum. And then last question, should I be concerned if my testicles are bigger than my penis? So no, and this is a sort of a spectrum of a question. Um, first of all, if you're going through puberty, testicles are the first thing to enlarge anyway, so testicles can be bigger than the penis. Second, some people just have bigger testicles or scrotums, um, scrotal sacs than the penis, and that's okay. The last thing is that um, there are some things that can cause the testicles or the scrotum to appear bigger. One is a hernia, which we've already talked about, Two is something called a varicocele, which is when the blood vessels that go to the testicles um, are enlarged and can sort of fill up that scrotum as well and make things appear enlarged. And so um, if that's the case, it's worth talking to your doctor, but we don't, that usually, um, that can go away on its own, so we don't usually do anything about it. Um, but I would say going through puberty, totally fine. Um, but I would say don't worry about it unless you have concerns about something else being in your scrotum. And that'll do it for this round of 22 in 22.